Kayla Logs, the author of Always Squeezing Lemons. She's also the founder of nonprofit Move Into Words. And she's had a very successful career in an interesting niche in the real estate industry. And she joins me today for the podcast. Kayla, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Jeff. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on. I've been looking forward to this conversation. I, it's not very often that I have a published author on the podcast. So uh, when I when we connected, I was really interested in learning more about your work and the topic of your upcoming book and also your nonprofit as well. So I think we've got a lot of cool stuff to share with our audience. And I'm just really looking forward to diving in. But before we do that, Kayla, do me a favor and share just a little bit of your background for our listeners, hometown, um, education, career, and then we'll kind of dive into your inspiration behind the work that you're doing now. Absolutely. Um, so actually, I'm a little bit of a native to this area. I went to elementary school in Huntersville, and then my family moved to St. Simons Island in Georgia when I was in sixth grade and all through high school. So I kind of call that my hometown, um, but totally a mix. So now kind of being back, it, it's funny as I drive around the area as a kid, I see places I'm like, oh, I went there and, you know, I had a surgery there or we went here and played school played school or ball or whatever. Um, so it's kind of cool, but mostly St. Simons Island, Georgia is where I say I'm native from. I went to school at University of South Carolina in Beaufort and my degree was in journalism and communications. And I pursued kind of a lot of different things. My main focus when I was in school was actually broadcast and journalism. So I started the broadcast at the university there. Um, the My one colleague that actually helped me create the broadcast. She broadcasts now for CBS headquarters in New York for soccer. So um, it was a really successful broadcast. It was great experience. Um, and then from there, I went to DC and I worked on government contracts and managed Pilates studios. I started a social media company. So when it comes down to diversity and backgrounds, I kind of have a little bit of all the above. Um, so that's like a little bit in terms of like my professional background. Um, but I also Gosh, I mean, I, I love going to the beach. I love, you know, meeting, connecting with new people. Coffee shops are my, my jam. You'll find me at any local one. Um, so, yeah, just I guess it's like super small background about me. But St. Simon's Island must have been a pretty interesting place to, to grow up for the most part um, that I've never visited, but I'm somewhat familiar with it. It sounds like a really cool place. It is. It was it was really unique. It's a, it's literally an island. Most people don't know that there is a small island off the coast of Georgia. <laughs> it's like 20 minutes from the Georgia Florida line, so super south Georgia. And what what I loved about that area, it's kind of even the same way that the college I went to, it's smaller, so you're able to make a lot more like closer connections and develop and kind of grow those on a more personal level than um most, I guess essentially, because you're in a larger area. So yeah, Buford is also on the coast of South Carolina. So you went to the University of South Carolina at Buford, and that's um, just, uh, I believe that's just outside, is it Hilton Head or, yeah? Yeah, so they actually had, like, I was one of, the communications department was actually one of the newer majors when I actually was accepted there. And I was on a softball scholarship my first year, and then I personally decided that I wanted to pursue more into my actual career. So I decided no longer to stay with that, but I loved the college. Um, the professors, they were amazing. So I decided to just stay at that college, but it is, yeah, I mean, it's only about an hour and a half north of where I actually grew up and it's right over the South Carolina Georgia line. Um, but it's, it's beautiful. We had, a, I went to the new Bluffton campus they had, so it's kind of like all around the low country. That's awesome. Uh, I'm a big fan of that area and I love, I love the coastal Carolinas. So that's, uh, that's a topic for another podcast episode. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, I can elaborate yeah. multiple things on that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we could definitely talk a lot more about, about that for sure. And one other thing I want to talk about before we get into your nonprofit and your, uh, your upcoming book, um, you are in the real estate industry. And I mentioned earlier that you've found success in a, in kind of an interesting niche of that industry. Um, I don't think it's something that most people would uh, assume uh, about the, you know, if you say I'm a licensed broker, generally they think of the traditional residential realtor. Um, can you share a little bit about what you do in the real estate industry? Yeah, absolutely. So I work for a land development company, um, Waterfront Group, we're located right in Cornelius. And 
I actually have my license in four different states because we have properties kind of all over the country. And what we do is we go and acquire large tracts of land and we develop them. Um, so we put all the infrastructure in place. What's a little bit more unique about the land development company that I work for is we actually build out and establish large communities. So people locally here are probably familiar with Eagle's Nest up in Banner Elk. That's one of our mountain communities. And we do smaller, pretty much scaled sizes of Eagle's Nest around different areas. We're developing around Watauga Lake really heavily right now. Um, so it's really cool. It's, it's different because I sell land, right? So um, that's the main portion of my job. I meet with people, I talk to them about their plans, their future, whether it's a retirement home, whether it's an investment. And I mean, from very, the, the visions and the ideas of what people have is so unique and so different and it's really cool. So it, it's it's an opportunity to connect with people, not just here, but all over. I mean, we have people coming from California, we have people coming from out of the country. Um, so that's, that's what I do really love about it because I mean, land, they're not making any more of it. Um, you're definitely, selling a dream rather than just here you can feel it and you can touch it so you have to really dive deep and really connect with people on a much different level so it is very niche and very different on that sense of it um, but we also do actually list homes and sell homes and list lots and sell lots on behalf of the buyers or sellers up in eagle's nest and around that high country area so i really got to dabble into both of it um it, it's very diverse for that reason um you gotta also having my license in multiple states I have to know multiple, many more real estate laws than your your normal broker, um, but it's it, it's really cool. It's it's fun. Again, the opportunity to connect with people is awesome. Yeah, I'm sure juggling the different rules and regulations between states is always a lot of fun. Yeah, they're definitely not making more land in the high, the high country of North Carolina, which is just a a beautiful, beautiful area of the United States and such a desirable place. Eagle's Nest is absolutely beautiful. A former employer of mine um, has a place up there, built a place in the last few years, and it, it is just, it's so pretty. Such it's, a beautiful place. Banner Oak and Eagle's Nest and that surrounding area is just so pretty. It really is. And I mean, it, it's cool because it's on the side of like what I do is obviously we're just selling the lots, but now having the relationships, the clients years and years later, and seeing the homes they build and kind of the futures that they're putting out there or the money that they're able to make off their own investments. Um, it, it's really unique and it's very rewarding on my end, of course, for them as well. Um, and the community in Eagle's Nest is what's really unique, right? Having a literally a mountain. I mean, if, if people aren't familiar with Eagle's Nest, it's an actual mountain and it's a community on a mountain with literally anything and everything you want to do for outdoor activities, amenities, there's winery, like it's, you could go to Eagle's Nest and never leave. They're building a restaurant. They've got a Dollar General on the mountain. Um, so it's really cool to see how much it's developed over the period of time that even just I've been there for the past three years. So it's, it's very unique, but it's also um, very rewarding too. Yeah. And isn't, um, if I'm not mistaken, isn't Elk River Club, that's Banner Elk also, right? So golf fans may know, uh, may recognize the name Jack uh, Nicholas, who I think designed the Elk River Club and is one of the uh, one of the founding members there. Uh, and again, another just a beautiful area of the country. It's 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 so cool. Uh, I appreciate you sharing that. I thought that was worth sharing because uh, it's yeah. a really cool, you know, just a really interesting segment of the real estate industry that you work in. I, I think that must be really exciting and a lot of fun. It is. And I've learned a lot from the business itself, even really being able to identify my strengths and opportunities and things to build off of when it comes into transferring with the book and the nonprofit and everything like that, even though they're, they're completely separate directions, they marry really well together because at the end of the day, sales or really anything you do is communication and relationships and building and fostering that. So I've learned a lot on how to overcome that type of stuff through the sales process and, and my own personal and growth journey as well. Sales is definitely a journey. We're, and I, we're also going to circle back very soon and record another conversation for an, a separate podcast, a different podcast. And we're going to talk a lot more about um, how you coach and are able to help uh, folks in the sales industry. And we're going to talk a little bit about your your career there as well. Um, but that's a great segue into really what I wanted to talk to you about on this podcast episode, and that is your nonprofit, Move Into Words. 
um, share for listeners a little bit, like what was the inspiration behind that and explain um, some details about the kind of work that you and the team do with Move Into Words. Yeah, so it's interesting. It kind of started even with my book at first. And I literally had a call right before this talking about kind of the marketing and the campaign that we're doing behind the book pre-launch and kind of plans moving forward. And of course, the first question comes like, why did you want to write a book? And, you know, or what was the calling or what was the purpose? And I was like, quite frankly, I, I just felt called to write the book, right? There was no other intention behind it besides I have a story to share. I want to write this book. And gosh, I was so naive to it, so naive to the entire process and building it out and really, you know, what all it entailed. And I, I say I'm actually very thankful for that because really anytime you go into stuff with like huge high expectations rather than like a plan, you end up being disappointed. So um, definitely we had a plan, definitely had structure and a team behind me to help me do that. But through my book writing process, the main thing that really intertwined and like went over to move into words was journaling. And even within my book, um, at the end of each chapter, there's the self-reflection opportunity with what I call, my book's called Always Squeezing Lemons, as you said. But at the end of each chapter, there's a lemon drop, which pretty much summarizes the whole chapter. And then below it is a journal prompt. And the journal prompt is obviously the opportunity for you to like take a moment, reflect, and ties the whole chapter kind of together. But it's my experience, it's my journey, but for you to able, for you to be able to essentially apply to your own journey in life. And this translates over to move into words because I'm like, okay, I'm writing all these things down, but I want to help on like a larger level. I want to make it more personal. I want people to be able to experience this in person. And the main thing behind, behind move into words was advocating for the practice of journaling and how we started building out move into words. I'm the person that I want to go here, there, do this and that. And I bring myself back down after the big vision and I have these big goals, but it takes one step and complexity is added with success. So starting with our monthly events and we had our first monthly event that we launched in February and really what our monthly events pretty much entail are a physical activity. So we bring somebody to, that's a, of course, a certified instructor or somebody that has a background in fitness to lead a physical activity for 30 to 45 minutes. Then we talk about the practice of journaling and how it can help you kind of bring that all together. And then we bring a motivational speaker. So the last one was yoga and the, the um, speaker spoke about self-awareness and self-consciousness. And then our next event on April 27th is about what we're marketing and pretty much proning it as knocking out anxiety. So it's going to be a boxing mixed with a HIIT workout. And um, the person that's coming to speak, she was actually on The Bachelor this season. Her name's Medina. And her topic is practical ways to overcome anxiety. So that's kind of like our basic that we're starting with are those events really fostering a community that wants to be in a strong environment that supports habits, right? Like that are actually healthy and an environment that is supportive of that. Anxiety is a really great topic to be talking about and to be helping people with. That's uh, That's been really kind of front and center um, on a lot of people's minds. Uh, I right. think so much is even more so now post 2020. And I, it's, I have a, another interview with another, uh, with a uh, psychologist uh, that I'm actually going to be releasing soon. We talk a little bit about anxiety and ADHD and that sort of thing. And so that it's timely that you bring that up and that, that your, uh, your event on the 27th is going to kind of uh, talk a little bit about that as well. Um, yeah. And it's what? interesting. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> well, no, it's just, I mean, I think the mental health and even like I read about this in my book, physical health has always been a huge priority for me. I've been an athlete my whole life. I always would work out and it was a lot for a lot of people working out's hard, but for me, it, it, it's still hard, but I put, and I pushed myself, but it was easy because I was used to it. Whereas the mental health part and addressing things and traumas and stuff like that, I, I didn't want to worry about that. Right. It's easier to cope or go do something that isn't, necessarily supporting that, whether it's going to bars, drinking, doing all the things that aren't supportive of a healthy habits. And a lot of that comes down to environment though. So our move into words, like the actual equation we put into like one simple thing is your habits plus your environment equal your output. And we really believe in kind of the counterintuitive apart or approach of you have to be selfish before you can be selfless. So it's working on building yourself up and having that right 
you know, foundation of taking care of yourself mentally and physically in order to show up and be better in your professional life, your personal life, or lead anybody else that you'd want to. Environment is another topic that I love to talk about as well. That's something that I've been, I've grown more conscious of over the last 10 or 15 years and the effect that the environment, you know, that our environments play on our, on our outcomes. Right. And I love that, that phrase you said, ha our habits plus our environment equals our outcome or our output. Mm -hmm. um, I, that's really cool. I love how that kind of encapsulates and put, puts it really into an easy perspective to understand. Yeah, for sure. And that's, I mean, it's, it's funny because it's, it, we're trying to encompass everything, but it brings it down to one thing, which is you, right? Yeah. There's, there's a lot of different things that we're focusing on, but overall wellness isn't just one avenue, right? Of course, there's things that you can do to focus on and that you might need more help of than others, but having that well balanced structure and the environment itself, right? Habits mm -hmm. and environment, no matter what matter. And so it's bringing it all together kind of like that, if that makes sense. It makes total sense. Yeah. And full disclosure, I'm not qualified to talk about uh, to talk about mental health, but I will say <laughs> that that's something else that I've observed that um, and I, I, I'm sure I'm not alone, that that's something that really hasn't been talked enough about um, uh, over forever for years, even going back to when I was a kid. And I think that there's a lot of I think that um, every generation was just kind of, you know, we just sort of, it was just something that we kind of bottled up that we ignored or we tried to overcome with, um, like you said, uh, other activities that may or may not be so productive. Uh, and I think that a lot of, um, a lot of those self-destructive habits as well uh, are, are kind of a result of just trying to ignore or, um, or, you know, solve those those mental those unaddressed mental health issues so um again a topic for another podcast episode and with and you'll have to have that conversation with someone a lot more qualified than i am so <laughs> <laughs> i mean i think really when it comes down and i don't it's truly when it comes down to mental health i mean of course there's multiple people with degrees and degrees and that's their studies but when it comes down to processing your own mental health or things that are bothering you or your own traumas it's really just being honest with yourself, right? And I think that's what a lot of us naturally tend to have trouble with. And it is hard. A lot of the times we don't, we don't want to talk about things that have bothered us. We don't want to talk about our mistakes. We don't want to talk about our failures. We don't want to talk about things that we have a hard time forgiving ourselves for. And But when we're able to actually bring that to paper, and that's why I'm such an advocate of journaling, is because when you write these things down, the things that we want to keep in the back of our minds, and we put it down on paper, it's like the most refreshing purging thing that you could possibly do. So that's really what for me, like move into words, I was like, you're moving your body into a way because of course, movement naturally helps you be creative, it helps you put things down or think thought provoking things that you might not have before, right? So it's just it's the natural flow of the body. So that's how kind of the entire name came about. Um, but but the journaling part, it's I think it's something it's such a simple practice, but it's one of the hardest things to do. Right. I, I thought it was the stupidest idea ever. I really did. And to my sister, I write about this thoroughly through, in my book about my experience with it when I was going through a ton and I had never journaled and I was so reluctant, resistant. I was like, there is no way this is going to work. Like, there's no way doing this would work. And my sister is so smart. She's a double major in psychology and Spanish. The girl's got brains for days. And she just would subtly hint to me, try it out. Just, just do it. I promise you it would be worth it to try it. And I just was so resistant. And finally, one night, it was the summer of 2020. I literally will never forget it. I broke down everything. And it was the it was a night of like pure clarity, peace, forgiveness, things that like I didn't even realize I had. Um, it was really, really interesting. So I've been so passionate about it. And that's where even like the pages of my book started to unfold is through my journaling. And I, I do think no matter what anybody's dreams or desires are, writing it down is an absolute must. That's really interesting because I've heard so much about um, over the years, I've heard from others as well, uh, and people who I admire, uh, and whether they're authors or 
uh, professionals uh, or even some sales folks who are really, really highly su successful salespeople in, in different industries have talked about how journaling has helped them in, with their, you know, with their professional lives, their personal lives, their, as you, you know, alluded to mental health. Um, so I've never, I, I, the last time I did any journaling was in my, uh, my honors English class in high school. So I don't, it's not something that it's something that I've resisted, I guess, is my point too. Yeah. To, you know, to your point, I, I can echo that, that sentiment that uh, it's something that I've resisted too, but it, it's intriguing. And it's something that I'm willing to learn more about and give it, give it a try too. So share with me a little bit. I'm, I'm just curious, when are the best times for someone to, to, uh, obviously it's a habit that we need to form right it's uh mm -hmm. it's a routine a habit that we need to 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 form and stick to uh when's the best time to do it so i think it depends honestly for each individual but if you're just trying to get started i always like to do it in the morning i'm a morning person though and i also think it's it's sets your mind up really well for the day because nothing's happened you're not getting blown up with emails something you know it, it's something that really starts your day off well and one thing that I started doing, I mean, it's probably been two years now, is I do a morning gratitude practice. So every morning, I just write down three grateful thoughts, three things I'm grateful for. And a lot of the times it ends up being similar, my family, you know, my workout, whatever it is. It's, it's super simple, but it sets your mind up really, really well. And it's interesting because I kept one notebook of just my three grateful thoughts every morning and to reread them and like certain mornings, like I'll never forget one morning I wrote down, I was like, I have way more than three things to be grateful for, right? But that natural practice continues and sets yourself up really good through the day. But the one other thing that I've started doing in the evenings that has really helped me personally, and I think this would help any young entrepreneur, entrepreneur just in general, anybody that is a high achieving personality is writing down three wins from the day and three wins for the next day. It's super ap applicable, it's practical, it takes less than three minutes to really get, dive into it. And what it does is it allows yourself to give yourself credit for the day. You know, even if it was a shitty day, I'm sure you can find three wins, whether it was buying a friend a coffee or whatever it was, and then setting yourself up for the next day. Like, what can I do for the three wins or what are three priorities, no more than three for the next day. Um, so I think those are really great ways to just start getting writing things down. But for people that are like dealing with stuff or they're just feeling resistant and reluctant, I always just say be vulnerable with the pages. That's like my saying I revert back to just write it down, like write the shit down. You know, yeah. no one's no one's going to read it. And that was my biggest fear. I'm like, what if somebody gets this? It's like my treasured possession. Like, I don't want anybody to read this. And that fear goes away when you actually start. You get to the point, it's not like you don't care, but you almost don't care what people think, right? Like you're like, this is helping me. This is a judgment-free zone. If you actually care what my feelings and thoughts are, you you should probably start reflecting on your own, right? Um, but those are like actual practical ways I would say to start. That's very cool. I like that. The three wins and the three the three wins for today and the three wins for tomorrow um, idea at, in the evening, I think is really cool. I'm always looking for some some way of turning off the ideas at night yeah. so that, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the, one of my problems with falling asleep at night is I can't, I, I have a lot on my mind. I have a lot of ideas that I haven't fully executed on or just a lot of things going on. Right. And I think we all do. I'm not alone in that. Um, yeah. And journaling and, helps yeah. with that though. It really does. I mean, it's like studies done on if you just write stuff down at night, like it actually does calm your mind and like puts you to sleep. Mm -hmm. And like, even like that practice there, I picked up from the gap in the game. It's a, it's a book and I listened to the audio version. I really like the audio version because they do it kind of on an interview at the end of each chapter. And that's, that's all about kind of giving yourself credit. Um, and, but like I said, that, that practice there alone, I did it for 30 days. And it's become something that even if I don't write it down, I naturally, when I'm laying down at night, I think like, okay, this was a win, three things I'm doing tomorrow, right? So it's, it just becomes, it becomes a habit, as you said. Yeah. I, uh, the gap in the gain sounds really interesting. I'm not familiar with that. Um, I'll have that in the show notes for this episode too. Just want yes. to mention that before It's one of my favorites. You know, speaking on the topic, and, and then I'll drop it after this, because again, I'm not qualified to talk about <laughs> mental health or anxiety, but 
you know, you mentioned um, uh, coming to terms with your mistakes and failures. And I think that, you know, so much of what we struggle with these days is that um, we're so consumed within social media. Uh, some of it is for good, you know, time well spent and, and some of it could, would probably be better spent doing other things. But, um, but I think that, you know, so much of that is, uh, can influence our mindset because, um, of that comparison, uh, that, that, uh, that tendency to compare our lives to those that we're, you know, either close with and following on social or, or not close with, but following anyway. And, uh, because, you know, generally mistakes and failures are not shared, uh, in our marketing, right. Whether it's social media or elsewhere. So, um, what do you, what are your thoughts on that topic? Well, actually, I mean, so my book is, always squeezing lemons, but the subtitle is taking responsibility to define your own success. And mm -hmm. it's, it's not a book about a how to success book. It's not a one, two, three step process, which is what I think a lot of people think nowadays, right? That kind of instant gratification. I call it our microwave society. All we see is the instant success, but no one sees everything behind the doors. Right. Um, but I, I think a lot of that has come down to like, the external validation and checking other people's boxes and doing things that don't necessarily, you don't even know what your purpose is. You don't know what your why is. You don't really know what you want. So you're so worried about exceeding other people's expectations that you don't even know what yours are. Um, and so my book, a lot about that is understanding that in order to have success or do anything, you have to make these mistakes. You have to feel the lows to feel the highs. And what somebody else's high is, isn't probably going to be your high, right? Um, so it's really understanding and finding what that purpose is. Because for me, what kind of was my breaking point was when I didn't realize who I was or what I wanted or who I wanted to become. Like, I was lost. I was completely lost. And I was living what a lot of people would see as a picture perfect life. I was married to a very handsome, intelligent man. We had two houses. We had a dog. I had a like thriving Pilates career. And I was effing miserable. I really was. And I was just capped out and I was doing all these things that I thought I was supposed to be doing. And I was not happy at all. And I finally, it was summer of 2020 when I was like, okay, this isn't it. I don't know what it is, but I don't have purpose. And I do believe purpose belongs in everything, but I had none. And so I went through a lot of mistakes and failures and F ups and did all the wrong things to figure out what was right. And I learned that trying to, you know, make somebody else happy or based off of what society thinks or trying to achieve this or this next title, it means nothing if you're not enjoying what you're doing in the process, right? So if we're just climbing the next mountain to see what's at the top of that view and the only thing we're looking for is that view, but we're not enjoying the journey, it's not going to be fulfilling. Um, so I think it comes down to that internal reference point. We all have to kind of really determine what success looks like for us, right? Uh, because we can't, um, yeah, it's 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 not worthwhile. It's it's unhealthy to to shoot for somebody else's goals or shoot for somebody else's idea of success. And it sounds like that you were kind of living what you had maybe had been trained or accustomed to thinking was, you know, the the. Uh, the idea of success was there a light bulb moment for you obviously it took some it took some time to really kind of some real introspection and some real um thinking to yeah. determine what success would look like for you but was there kind of a light bulb moment i mean honestly i think it's something that with success it's ever evolving right as we grow as our journey continues what success mm -hmm. looks like changes too so if we're just constantly living this normal parallel and expecting life to look like this we're so wrong right it, it changing it up mixing up like the amount of obstacles and challenges that i've overcome in the past three years to completely start over like literally i left with 900 dollars, and i was like i don't know what i'm doing but i'm gonna figure it out to where i'm at now was a lot of messing up. There was a lot of success in there, but also, I mean, I was a personal mess, you know? So it's it's figuring out how to align everything and letting those traumas go and moving on and 
constantly understanding that life changes. And I think a lot of us don't like change, right? People naturally like to just stay because it's comfortable. But when you can train yourself to get uncomfortable and start to create certainty and uncertainty, right? So that's, we fear the future that's not even real yet. And it's uncertain, which holds a lot of us back. But creating certainty when I say that is in yourself, right? Having belief in yourself that no matter what, you're gonna make it happen. You're confident in your skills. You're confident in who you are. You're confident in your morals and your values and your beliefs, and it'll carry you through. And it's healthy to change that, that target, that idea of what success is for you individually. Um, you know, it doesn't have to stay the same throughout your life, right? It's healthy to change that. Absolutely. And I think it's necessary, actually. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're growing and you outgrow something, you shouldn't be afraid to leave that behind to hit bigger heights. Um, you know, and I, but I do think naturally a lot of us just want to stay because it is comfortable and it's known and it's, we know what the next day looks like. Whereas if we're like, oh my goodness, if we do this, <laughs> what's it going to be? What's it going to look like? What's going to happen? Um, but I, that holds a lot of us back. Probably not the most philosophical person I can think of, but truly one of the most successful in the history of mankind would be Jeff Bezos. And I've listened to a lot of his keynote speeches, a lot of his interviews, um, big fan, love him or hate him. I get it. Like there's a lot of controversy about all kinds of things, but I personally just, I, I, I'm, I've been so fascinated with uh, learning about his journey and something that he echoes in a lot of his different interviews and keynotes is the fact that his successes are obvious, but what no one ever seems to mention or sees are the thousands of failures that took place along his journey. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because the successes paid for those failures. Yep. Um, but the, the, I mean, truly that is the only, you know, we, we have to fall down before we can pick ourselves up. Right. So it's um, so true. Yeah. And I think it's also, it's like, we don't, I think until we know what we don't want, we don't necessarily know what we want. I think it's a really good learning lesson and understanding like on a personal side, but also professional side, um, really anywhere to understand, like if you don't fail, and like I said, you don't feel that low, like you're, you're not going to be able to feel the high, even if it yeah. is successful. Right. And kind of what I say, like defining your own success is so important. And one thing I always like to tell everybody, especially I talk to a lot of people that find that they're, they're kind of like low in their confidence or they give the excuse, but what if this happens? Or like, but what if that doesn't work? But you know, it's always the, but, but if, but if, but what if rather mm -hmm. than like, but what if it does work? But what if it does happen? Right. It's always kind of more the negative perspective. And I always say we're all experts in our own experience. So if you're willing to learn and listen and you're willing to share your knowledge, you have something to give and gain in every conversation, anybody you meet. And that's that's a great way to find confidence in yourself um, and explore that opportunity and meeting new people and connecting um, is will, will take you more places. than I would say most people will be able to expect. Is that challenging for you? Is was that, was that kind of a, a a was that a challenging part of your growth uh, uh, during this process? It was connecting with other people and 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 meeting and kind of I you've described yourself as an introvert, I think, somewhere on your website in your bio. Uh, yeah. Was that process kind of part of your your growing journey? So I'm I would say I'm the most introverted extroverted person you'll ever meet because okay. I love to be you know by myself, doing my own writing, calm, like put my sonos on, nothing but just me in my own space. And I need that to recharge. But I do love meeting people. I do love connecting with people, not all the time, by no means. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say it was a challenge for me, um, just because naturally, I mean, even being in sales, like I do like to talk to people. I am an empath. I think that sometimes is harder for me on some sides of it. Um, but for people that do have a hard time with that, and I've had multiple people ask me that, like, how can you just go talk to this person? Like, I'm the person that will go sit at a restaurant by myself. And that, like, I, but that took me a while to get to that point. Like, I used to have to be with somebody. And a lot of people would ask me, like, how, why, right? And it was just skills that I had confidence in. So I would ask them, well, what, where do you have confidence in your skills and how can you apply that to moving forward to, you know, 
putting yourself in the right place at the right time with the right people. Because the rooms that I'm gonna put myself in for networking with sales or this book or the nonprofit are gonna be different than somebody that's behind a computer doing networking with engineer stuff and computer tech things that I have no idea, right? So you're just around a completely different environment. But going back to even environment, I think it's important to establish like, what's your why, why do you need to do this and who do you wanna talk to, right? Yeah, yeah, and you mentioned that uh, the concept of knowing your purpose too, like having uh, how important it is to have purpose. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, uh, what other tips would you have before we close anything else you want to share with listeners on the topic that might be relevant, uh, maybe share another tidbit from your book or from your nonprofit. Yeah. So, I mean, I have a couple different things. Like I mentioned the, for the journaling, the practicing of the daily gratitude, the three wins um, each day. And then for tomorrow, I think those are like practical tips that anybody should just try. Truly, I, like if you try it, please reach out. Let me know. 30 days, you'll be surprised at how much of a small little lift it is to make a big difference. Um, and then kind of tying in essentially to the nonprofit and the mission, I always just start by like, move your body, move your body. Like every single day, I mean, we're constantly encapsulated and we're always behind our phones. We're always behind our computers, working, 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 but like, just get out and walk. You don't gotta go do anything high intensity, but like start making that a daily habit, right? So that's something that really, even with move into words, it's about movement. It's not about, doesn't have to be high intensity, doesn't have to be yoga, doesn't have to be any of that. It's just getting your body flowing. Um, and then I would say like kind of going two final things just to wrap up kind of my book, but get intentional with your why. And a lot of my book has to do with individual purpose. And it's it's going back to even kind of we talked about where we have issues with comparing ourselves and who's winning what here. And rather than understanding who we are and like why we're doing stuff and really getting intentional with that purpose and trust your intuition. I always tell people that they're like, well, how did you know to do this? Or why did you make that decision instead of this one? And I've gone against my intuition before and it never turned out well. But anytime I trust my intuition, no matter how weird and crazy it seemed, things, you know, that wasn't like instant success as we all might expect, but things started to flow and it felt comfortable. And anything that feels uncomfortable or if you're miserable in, like it's not meant for you. Just let that shit go and write it down write it all down, <laughs> write everything down. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I would say in the summary kind of between my book and the nonprofit, um, you know, it's, it's really all about becoming the best version of yourself and how to get there. And we're it. all on the journey of growing together. It's not an, it's a never ending task. Yeah, we're all, yeah, it's, we're, we're all in the same boat, right? We're all in it together. Yes. We all, we all have to go through it. Are you, a uh, a pen and paper person or do you, do you have a remarkable or a kindle scribe How oh do you pen journal? and paper pen and all paper. day mm -hmm. yeah i write everything down like i probably like i'm working on getting better about like even my remote calendar because i i love actually crossing things off and for me if i just write one word down i know like i can remember the exact conversation i had so i don't need to take a bunch of notes but if i write mm -hmm. the word down i can look at it and i'll remember exactly what I was said, what I need to do. So, I mean, most, not everybody's brain works that way. Mine does, but I'm always even like, I get very intentional on pen and paper. Like I said, the majority of my book I wrote down and then I would type it out by the end doing like really writing into it. But um, yeah, pen and paper every day. That's a great tip too, by the way, just uh, a note taking tip, just remembering the context of a conversation based on just writing that one word down and you'll be able to recall, you know, when you associate with the context of that conversation, what it was that you were talking about or what the idea was or what did it, what it was that you were trying to remember. So that, that's really cool. Yeah. That's yeah. something we could talk about in our other podcasts. Cause when it comes down to sales and notes taking, that's huge, huge. That's, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. yeah. That's going to be some really cool practical stuff. And I'll, um, that uh, that episode will be on a separate podcast that will be released after this one. But when it is, I will come back to the show notes in this episode and drop a link to that one so that anyone that wants to follow up and continue this conversation with us can jump on that podcast. Um, so I will uh, I'll have a link to that in the show notes for this episode. Kayla, two things I want to make sure that we 
uh, make our listeners aware of uh, so that they can follow up and participate. Uh, one is your book release, which I'm so excited for you. Uh, that's a really monumental achievement. Uh, and you mentioned what a journey it was to write a book and how you underestimated the process. And I've gotten that from a lot of authors, uh, especially yeah. for their first work. So congratulations on that. That's amazing. When, uh, when is that being released and how can listeners get a copy? Um, it will be the launch date is May 28th. Mm -hmm. And so pre-orders are live now. I'm doing some special offers for pre-orders. Um, like I mentioned, there's journal prompts at the end of each chapter. But after listening to this, maybe you'd be a little bit more reluctant to want to try and read a little bit more about it. So for anybody that pre-orders, I have a link on my website. All you got to do is submit your name your name, your email, and it'll direct you directly to the Amazon link to pre-order the book. But you'll also receive an email directly from me, from me with 10 bonus journal prompts, a personalized note. And I'm also going to send you actually an invite to my first book launch event and signing. And it's going to be collaborated with an actual nonprofit fundraising event, too. I love it. I love yeah. it. And Move Into Words. How can uh, listeners learn more about Move Into Words and your next event, which comes out, uh, which is happening April 27th. And I'm going to edit and turn this episode around quickly enough that we can help you kind of spread the word about that as well. Uh, what are some details on that event? Okay, perfect. Yeah, so my website, my personal website is kaylalope.com. And I'm sure mm -hmm. we can link that too, which Absolutely. also directs to move into words, but it's also move into words.com. Um, both have Instagram accounts, which is where most of our content's posted. Um, so following us on Instagram, at Kayla Logue underscore or at move into words underscore. And our move into words next event is going to be April 27th. And it's actually going to be in Huntersville. So it's going to be at the Rockbox location there. Um, we have the sign up events already. I'll give you the link to be able to post that. It's on our website. It's on our social media accounts. So we have that kind of plastered everywhere. But it'll be a really fun event. Um, we're going to do more giveaways. We're going to talk more about kind of like our plans going into the summer, different volunteer opportunities and ways we're starting to spread because it's it's very small right now, but the picture, the big picture vision that we have and conversations we're having are really fruitful and they're very exciting. Um, so yeah, I mean, the more involvement, the more outreach, the more ideas, the more engagement, the better. And I'm happy to talk to literally anybody about all the things. <laughs> so I love it. We will definitely share that across all of our channels here too. And uh, I'll get it in the email newsletter and the show notes for this episode. We'll tag you on uh, social media as well when we release this and, um, and we'll kind of uh, do our best to, to ring the bell for you there awesome. as well. So this has been a lot of fun, Kayla. I'm looking forward to our next conversation, which is going to be for that other podcast that I mentioned that I haven't, uh, I don't think I've announced it yet. So I'm just going to keep that quiet for now, but we'll make an announcement soon. And uh, that's good. That's going to be a lot of fun, too. I'm really looking forward to diving into some really like the nuts and bolts and some practical applications that we can share with um, with sales professionals. So that's going to be really a lot of fun. Uh, thank you so much for your time and for joining the podcast. I really appreciate it. Kayla Logue is the author of Always Squeezing Lemons. She's the founder of the nonprofit Move Into Words. And she's a successful sales professional in her own right. Kayla, thanks so much for joining the podcast. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.